Well, rock and roll is about oh, the essence, it's about soul, it's about chaos, it's about like fucking making it loud and being alive, you know, speaking out what we want, you know? Yeah. So, hells yeah. <laughs> Things that uh, maybe aren't so radio friendly, so that's yeah. why <laughs> Precisely. we're at places like this. Precisely. With the, yeah. Hells yeah. That's part of the beauty of it as well. Yeah, that's how it goes. So uh, we're here with Francis from Devil Master uh, at St. Vitus Bar, and I just I wanted to get uh, your opinion on a few things in terms of underground metal scene. So wh what do you think of the, the status of underground metal scene right now, at least in New Great. York City? It's, I mean, in New York City, I'm from Philly, but I love coming up to New York for gigs and being asked to play gigs like this, so it's obviously alive. There's people here, you know. It's sick. New York's got a lot of good bands. It's yeah. a, great fucking city in terms of America. It's probably one of the most biggest cities in the world people want to go to, so obviously the metal scene's gonna be good too. just got signed to Relapse, who are re-releasing both our demos on a compilation LP that comes out November 2nd, so. Wow, congrats. Thank you. Relapse, that's huge. Yeah, that's great. and Japanese hardcore meets goth, I guess. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. I, I heard your, your EP and I got like a early mayhem vibe from it. Yeah, I mean, early mayhem influenced all of us when we were kids. Like yeah. Death Crush is like the most influential record in my life when I was like 13, so yeah. Yeah. each other because I used to wear a traditional ski mask with a mouth hole, but I don't have a mouth hole now. So. We're not very traditional. <laughs> We call it New Jersey hardcore because hardcore, hardcore is like a broad genre. Uh -huh. yeah. So uh, we love power violence, grind, you know, sludge, everything. So and you know, like fucking you know, traditional hardcore. So we just kind of melded it all together. Belted in the head with yeah, like, yeah, I had uh, like or, or the fucking steel toe. I had steel toe uh, yeah. like warehouse boots that yep. I was wearing. It was, it was actually here. We played a show at St. Vitus, and I just like I didn't even think about it. I just like threw it and it bounced off his head. <laughs> Six shits the family. Yeah, so. we fuck with each other real hard, but like we love each other. It needs to be in here. 
<laughs> yes, he's the does. reason why we're here. Yes, he is. Yeah, as a band. 100%. Perry. Pleasure. How you doing? What's happening, man? Smoking yeah. weed? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Toxicology and their friend, their guest, uh, Terry from Disrupt and Terry Grief from Disrupt. and Come to Grief. Yeah, yeah, dude. All right, and they'll be on later on tonight yep. as well. Uh, can you guys tell us a little bit about how you got Toxicology started? Maybe like where you got the name from, the sound? Uh, I mean, Toxicology for me, I mean, the definition is just the study of things that are toxic. So, I mean, our subject matter is basically that in the social aspect environmental aspect, you know, governmental, governmental, like in, at every level, you know what I mean? So that's kind of like what we do. In terms of influences, I mean, it goes without fucking saying. Disrupt. 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 100%. 100%. <laughs> that's great. Very, 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 very faithful uh, to, to the sound Doom. and the ethic. No problem, yeah. dude. Doom. Like, uh, no problem. doesn't end, yeah. You guys like a lot, of the, Japan, a lot of the Japanese stuff you yeah, guys dude. like, like Laws uh -huh. and, and all oh, that. Kism, 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 definitely. Yeah, oh yeah, Confuse, yeah, Obviously. absolutely, yeah. to share the stage with Terry uh, because like without Terry and without Disrupt like we wouldn't have done this for eight years um, which is pretty crazy. <laughs> Great to inspire younger people that are, you know, I mean, these guys, they have it in their heart. They have the passion, they have the fire. I mean, when I first met these guys, I was like, holy shit, it was just so authentic. I mean, it just comes right out of them. And uh, they asked me to come up tonight and play a couple songs of my old band Disrupt, and I was more than honored to do it. Pretty fucking wild, can I swear? But anyway, uh, yeah, it was, <laughs> Please do, uh, yeah. an honor. It was heavy duty. I mean, um, you know, I, I look out of the corner of my eye and I just see bodies flailing like the old days. And it was like, wow, man, some things, you know, it just that flashback just came back, you know? Yeah. I mean, they're just very faithful and they just pay the music a huge respect. And they're keeping the faith in a huge, huge way. And it means the world to me, you know? This is our third installation, so I'll go back to the first. Um, Jeff got a few local bands together over at a small venue in Queens. You know, I was doing my own thing around then, and I just really dig what he was going for. So we collaborated. We made. Uh, we had a few bigger bands come by for that event, and you know, the first year went pretty smooth. So we we were pretty dedicated to doing it again the second year. You know, we try to keep it as comprehensive as possible. We have like so many genres here. We have doom, crust, punk, regular, you know, punk, metal, black metal, thrash metal. You know, we try to like get a little bit of everything, provide a safe space for everybody to feel comfortable enough to like, you know, show their hard work and dedication towards the music scene. And, you know, it's all in one place. <laughs> Some people were actually getting sued because I guess Maryland Death Fest or Death, the Death Fest people actually copyrighted the name. Some people were saying that. We were joking around about it. I don't know what the details are to be honest, but you know, with Metal Punk Death Fest and the way it is now, we all like have like 
visions for the future and what we all want to do with our own creative uh, thinking, you know? And uh, the whole safe space about like this together is just providing more and more outlets for like bigger and better sources. So I think that's where we're going towards next year. It might not be Metal Punk Death Fest anymore, but it's still going to be us. It's still going to be the same thing, the same idea. And that's, that's pretty much it so far. So, uh, we listen to lots of different kinds of music and we just write riffs and put them together and sometimes they don't make sense but we just make it flow. Whatever. <laughs> 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 What is like the lyrical themes that you guys talk about now? Um, a lot of it is mental health and substance abuse based. I'm sober, so. so we're self-releasing a uh, seven inch that's going to be out in around December, and then uh, Tridroid Records is doing a cassette uh, of an what's up version of it. Yeah. yeah, the same thing. Of the same thing. Um, with the two right. remixes that Tom's brother did. <laughs> yeah, so far, so. remixes. They're pretty free. Your brother. Yeah. Is he a producer or engineer? Oh, he does a lot of different yeah. stuff. It's weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, you know, being in a being in a world where Trump is president and he keeps fucking shit up. How did we get here? Yeah, it's a good outlet, and I'm, I like being involved in the like music scene like locally and just keep making stuff and like, growing. Uh, I, I like going to shows, playing shows like that. Always have so. Cool. That's kind of why I do it. Yeah. <laughs> You guys, same uh, thing? Yeah, playing music, making art with uh, people I've become close to is uh, a lot cheaper than therapy, so. <laughs> yeah. Definitely, yep. And Tom? It's necessary for survival. <laughs> I feel like there's more bands, which means there's more diversity in sound, and there's more like cool music out there, but it's harder to remain a band. So that's my opinion. You go into a practice space and with five other guys, or four other guys, or four other females, or whatever it is, whatever the combination is there, and you go in there and you come up with something that you like, and when you share it with other people, there's a sense of self-satisfaction. And I think that's the only reason why anybody does anything, whether it's writing, whether it's music, whether it's anything. I think that is the primary driver for any kind of creative endeavor. Of course your family's gonna judge you for this shit, but then after a while I was like, fuck it, you know? I love this stuff. If it wasn't for skateboarding, I wouldn't be here right now, so, like, I don't know. <laughs> and Derek, you? Yeah. how did oh, you get me, into For me, like, get into rock music in general, like, after a while I want the harder shit. So yeah, after a while, like, listening to bands and whatnot, discovering bands that combine punk with metal, and it's like fucking, hell yeah, you know, two of the hardest fucking music in the rock world, like, fuck it, you know? <laughs> it's kind of what, what Motorhead started, and now people yeah, are still like doing it 30 years shit, later. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
And uh, so what do you guys think about festivals like this? I mean... I think it's fucking great, you know? like Keep it, them going, dude. It gives people a chance to give, like, people, like, inside of the local scene and, like, it, it, people can discover local bands in the area. It bridges like, the gap between metal and A lot and of punk. these bands are fucking slept on, too. And, you know, like, people would rather listen to fucking radio than all the awesome shit that's going on here. Yeah. Like, like what the fuck, you know? It's like, <laughs> fuck the radio shit. This is better fucking music we got right here, you know? but it's kind of hard to like really find the motivation to hook all that shit up and listen to it so if you got like a, a YouTube or like a fucking band camp send me it and, and, and I'll listen to it and I'll appreciate it and that's all I have to say all right Are you guys like Fox News or something? <laughs> no, no, not coy, man. Me, personally, I got a record player, but I don't really have the time to buy records and shit, so if I, you tell me a band, I look it up and I like it, I'll go see them and shit, to at least show support and whatnot, and so that's just for me. If I got the money for it, then I'll buy a record, but if I don't, I'll at least show support for the band. That's what matters the most, you know? Right on, it definitely does, yeah. Thanks, Derek. <laughs>